I'm collecting bees. Wild bees. My first contact with bees was uh, when I got a job as a sophomore in college at the Bee Lab. Um, my first job was just to data entry, very basic things um, to help out. But my boss, um, a wise man, I guess, <laughs> uh, mentioned that there was a possibility of doing a project in California where I would go for three months and collect insects, mostly bees, and learn something about the pollinators of the area. This was eight years ago. Um, and the first time I did it, mostly I was in it because of the camping and it was exciting and I was in a new place. But when I came back to the lab that fall and had to analyze the data, I realized that bees were fascinating, that there was so much to learn about the relationships between them and the plants and where they lived and why they were where they are. And I was hooked. I was stuck on bees after that. The easiest way to catch bees is to find a plant that they're attracted to and time is is a pretty good one, especially this time of year when not much is blooming anymore. So, now I've found one. Now I have to find a bee. I got two bumblebees off that time. But since we know what species there are, we can just let those go and write it down. I think this one's a little megachylidae. Summer bees. Megachylidae is a uh, one of my favorites, because they're the most fun to look at under the microscope. They have interesting structures on their face quite often, on their jaws, their mandibles, on their legs sometimes even. Megachylidae uh, females, rather than collecting pollen on their legs, collect it on their bellies. So this one I can tell is a male because it has no pollen collecting hairs on the underside of its abdomen. My name is Olivia Messenger. I'm from the United States, um, from the state of Utah, where I work for the USDA Bee Biology and Systematics Lab. Right now, I'm in Lesbos. I'm working with the University of the Aegean um, on a project. It's an alarm project for the European Union, uh, and we're studying bees. Most people use a net to catch bees. There are other methods. Every bee that we catch, we like to record the information, well, all the information that we can about it. Um, so we write down where we collected it, the day we collected it, and what plant we got it on. Um, and then also the time, the time of day that we got it. So that's, that's what I'm doing now. So the next step is to mount them in some way that we can easily look at them under a microscope and figure out what species they are. So to do this, we use pins of various sizes, and we mount them in a very standard way, the objective being to leave one side of the body completely untouched. So the pin always goes through the right side. So after they've been mounted, we can easily maneuver them under the microscope and figure out what species they are. Next step after pinning a bee is to label it so that you know where it came from, what plant it was collected on, uh, the day, maybe the time that you collected it, and usually you also record the person that collected it. So the first label on this bee is um, the location. Since we're in Greece, it starts with Greece and then the island of Lesbos, and then the site we put GPS coordinates on our labels and habitat. The label under that has the plant. This one was on lavender. And the label under that shows the time and the date and my name because I collected it. And the last label is just an accession number so we can keep track of all the specimens. So once all of the bees have labels on them, and have been entered in the computer, we sort them. Um, the first sort is sort of a visual one because like things you want to put together and then within them look under the scope and figure out which is which. And then once the bees have been um, 
I guess visually separated. We use the microscope to look for characters on the antenna, on the abdomen, on the head, on the legs, just about any spot on the body um, to see how many or see what kind of different species we have. And there are very few keys, especially here in Greece. And so I'm just trying to get like things together and then we'll send them to another museum that has a reference collection and they can do the actual naming of all of the bees. Bees play a pretty important role in most functioning ecosystems because um, because of the service they provide to flowers by pollinating, by um, gathering pollen from one plant and depositing it on another of the same species. Uh, when you look at the diversity of wildflowers that you see in, say, a Mediterranean area in the spring, uh, anemones, orchids, um, dandelions, chamomile, uh, lavender, you kind of get a sense of the importance of these bees. Um, even in the agricultural world, bees play a really important role of very cultivated plants. Uh, apples, avocados, almonds, uh, cherries, tomatoes, and for cucurbits. Bees play an important role in uh, ecosystem function, but they're not necessary for all plants to be pollinated. For example, the olive tree, which is so predominant in the Mediterranean, is pollinated by wind. Um, a lot of carrots are pollinated by uh, beetles. Um, anemones, especially the red ones, tend to be pollinated by uh, beetles and some flies. A solitary bee lives for a total of about one year. But the part of its life that you actually get to see is only about a month long. So in the spring, a bee emerges from its nest, gathers pollen and nectar, uh, builds its own nest. Sometimes the nest is in a, a twig or a dead tree. Sometimes it's in the ground. Sometimes it's on a a cliff face or maybe in a building structure. So it builds its nest, it um, lays eggs, each of which it provisions with a mixture of pollen and nectar, and then it seals off each little nest and leaves the egg there. And over the course of the next year, the egg will hatch and uh, develop into an adult bee, which emerges the following spring and repeats the process all over again. In the world, there are um, probably over 30,000 different species of bees. It's an incredibly diverse group, I think only behind uh, beetles and butterflies in terms of the number of species. Which makes sense when you think of all of the different flowers, the different, uh, the, the entire length of the flowering season, there's a lot of resources available for different species. In Mediterranean regions of the world, there tends to be some of the highest bee diversity. Um, we expect probably on this island to find well over 250 uh, bee species.